plastic surgery. No. <laughs> I just um, am super insecure on camera about my chin because I had um, stitches here when I was younger. And I think as you age, you lose volume in your chin is what she said. So get a little filler here so that I feel more confident. And I feel like a lot of people aren't comfortable talking about injections and that they get Botox and fillers, but I feel like it's a form of self-care to boost our confidence. So I want to put it out there that it's normal and aging is normal. And if we want to do something that makes us feel better about ourselves, then we should. Botox is a neurotoxin, you know, derived from the botulism toxin. So you've heard of botulism. It's the one that makes you sick if you eat a canned food that wasn't properly prepared. And so what naturally that does is it goes in and it st stops the muscle. The nerves are blocked from telling the muscle what to do. So like for foreheads, frown for me, can you? Kind no, of. Really? <laughs> Not really. You fixed that already. <laughs> <laughs> no. But like, let's say, you know, if you frown, your muscles are the ones that are typically responsible for moving and causing the wrinkles. So with neurotoxins, we inject it into the muscle and it blocks the little communication between the, where the nerve tells the muscle to move. So now the muscles can't move and it stays in that little neuromuscular junction for like three to four months, then starts to fizzle out. So it's really good for wrinkles caused by muscle movement. So you use Botox in foreheads, eyes, like I said, lip lines, because make like you're blowing a kiss. These are muscles here that cause a lot of women to get wrinkles. Um, we're gonna do Ashley's mentalis muscle, which is like a big one on the chin that causes it, actually this muscle pulls the skin down on top of it. And that's what causes the pew to orange. They call it the orange peel appearance. Mm. So it's like a muscle relaxer and it's preventing wrinkles that are caused by muscles to be formed. Um, we can actually, another thing with Botox, which is something that's happened to me as I get older, is the masseter. You know, the women that start grinding and their faces get wide. They have large masseter oh, muscles. Like muscle there. Yeah, so we can inject it there for grinding and to help slim the face. Fillers are basically hyaluronic acid mostly, and they go in and they replace fat and give you volume in areas where you've lost volume, usually due to fat loss and just shift of skin. And so like for Ashley here, she had larger fat pads in her chin and now they're depleting, kind of, they shrivel up as we age. And then you start to see like the skin pull and sag and we're supposed to be equal parts and the lower face starts to look smaller and not match up symmetrically with the rest of the face. And so that's where fillers come in. They're replacing volume. So I always tell my patients, think of like Botox, traditionally upper face correction and filler is everything kind of cheek down. So as we age, mm -hmm. part of the muscle is an issue too. Everything starts to pop up this way. Mm. And that's how we get that like witchy chin nobody likes. And Ew. you know, every <laughs> oh chins, chins are like big right now. Everyone's filling chins. Really? Which is good because everyone was originally filling cheeks. And then you had all these gals walking around with these huge cheeks. You have beautiful cheeks. You don't need anything like that. But the lower face is where most of us, I'd say about 90% or more of us age first. Mm -hmm. And so if we can put a little bit in your mental crease here, it will pull your cheek down and just make you like a little bit more balanced. Just correct that little. Just not as round and just more like. Angular. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I got it. For someone that's new to filler or Botox, I think most people are like apprehensive about it or like scared yeah. that they're yeah. going to come out botched Looking, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Um, it, obviously, and you do a consult, which I yeah. think is really reassuring because you do this every day. You do it. Mm -hmm. It's like you're a professional for a reason. So that's why I trust your judgment. But people are scared about it. I mean, what advice would you give them or how do they choose the right practitioner? Right. Because there's so many. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think there's I'll, like Groupon deals for like. Yeah, do I, and you know, I, <laughs> and I'm going to say I when I first started like 12 years ago, I worked in the city and we did Groupons because mm -hmm. like hair removal and Botox and um, 
but in general, and that was because we're building a practice, like it was a brand yeah, new spa. Yeah. In general, I would be a little weary about that mm -hmm. Groupon. I mean, so that was 12 years ago for me, so I was brand new. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was still trained really well, but I was still new. I was working out all the kinks, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think if people are nervous, like do your research. I know a lot of people like go on Yelp or um, find reviews. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I find, people find me through referrals, like yeah, through their friends. Yeah, that's how I found you. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of people, I think if you see your friend, the problem is if your friend's not fessing up to getting stuff done, that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. I would say reach out to make your friends fess up on what they're doing. Yeah, but the thing is like consultations are always complimentary. This is all elective. Like if you're go in and have a consult and you'll know, like if you don't feel a good vibe, mm -hmm. if you're not like jiving with the injector or feeling confident about what they're talking about, then get out of there and go find somebody else. Yeah, you know? or if they're like suggesting that you do something maybe that you're not comfortable doing or doing too much. Yeah, so I like that pet, you're conservative yeah. and that you're like, it's more of a natural look and it's not, I don't look like I've had my face injected. Well, maybe right now I do, but <laughs> not normally. I would say most of my patients come in, we start with like one thing, whether it be Botox yeah, or... That's what I did. I started yeah. with under the eyes and then I did the forehead and now here I am. And then yeah. I'm done. I'm done. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Until I find something else. Like I think... If anything, this year did for our industry was made it like more visible and a lot more kind of attention, positive attention on social media. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, look at Gwyneth. For years, she never said she did anything. And now she's the spokesperson for Zeoman, which is like a, a competitor to Botox. Like, I think it's just becoming a little bit more mainstream. But there's always going to be the people out there that don't want to do anything cosmetic and age naturally and that's fine mm -hmm. I don't want to do that but no. <laughs> I'm like I don't want to do that like I people... want to be like one of the 80 year olds in my chair you know when I'm that age you know I don't want to but everyone has their own opinion but I think it's changing like there's if there's ads all over tv now about Botox and Juvederm mm -hmm. and there's just a lot more write-ups in magazines and it's just becoming a little more I like that it's more normalized. Yeah. I feel like aging is normal. And if you want to do something to make yourself feel better for confidence purposes, like why would you not? Yeah. It's like self-care. Well, and it's preventative too. So maybe someone mm -hmm. would be able to put off having surgery at an earlier age or having right. surgery at all. Or, I mean, we'll see the, these millennials, they'll be a good indicator of kind of, if you start early, like what potentially could happen with aging with them in the future. So, yeah. Well, I would say if you see something, fix it. Like if you see something that's bothering you, address it as soon as you see it. Mm -hmm. Because I can't tell you how many times I have patients come in here and they're like 40s or early 50s and they're like, oh my God, I wish I would have done that years ago. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And because if you look at something and you don't like the way it looks, then it like ultimately has an effect on the way you feel. Yeah. And so we can do stuff about it. And then when you start younger, then we can, and you don't have to be young. Just like, you know, if you see something in the mirror, come in and talk to somebody and I guarantee there's something we can do. I think that's how I felt about my eyes. I never thought that underneath my eyes, there was anything I could do about that because it wasn't puffiness. It was just like lack of volume there. Yeah. And then once I did it, I was like, why the hell didn't I do this before? It's such a huge difference. And it's nothing that anybody else can tell. Right. But it's something that I can tell. Right. Well, and then it also, if you go online and you read about, filler under your tear troughs or something there's like all these horror stories and that freaks people oh, out and then yeah. they don't want to like do it so that's the other thing go talk to an expert don't mm -hmm. find online. all your information online because right. some of it's totally false or you're just getting like the bad botch stories you're not getting the real life day-to-day -day yeah. information so can't believe everything you read on the internet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for coming in today and seeing needles shoved into my chin <laughs> it's probably it's a little sore but i feel great i'm so excited to see the end results after this little bit of swelling goes down and uh, i'm glad that i got to share jen with you because she's so good and skin spirit is here in walnut creek super easy to book and it's very accessible so come check them out